Hey, it's John and Mike, brew-juice.com. Tonight, we've got something red, purpley, and something yellow, Borrowed. a little bit, yeah. like straw, dark hay colored. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're drinking tonight is my first real attempt at a sour beer. So this was the beer that was supposed to kick off a Solera project, but when I tasted it upon racking, getting ready to rack into the next stage of my Solera project, I felt like, man, this tastes so good. I didn't, I was afraid of like just wasting it on like waiting another 18 months for the Solera to finish up and start doing blending as I hop forward in the Solera. I thought, I'm just gonna take this because I have a big cake mm. of, of microbes ready to go. Yeah. And so what I did then is I took it, I put half of it just in a keg straight up and carbonated it. And that's what you have here, which is the golden. And then the other half I put on uh, three pounds of a, a blend, four pounds of a blend. So it was like two and a half gallons on um, a blend of sweet sour cherries okay. that, that were frozen. Yeah, when you um, said only that many pounds, but it was only for two and a half gallons. Yes. So that's yes. Only, yeah, so it's so a lot. Portion, yeah. It's a lot. Okay. It's, it was a beautiful thing. And it was on fruit for about two and a half months. Okay. And then I was like, I, I, I realized it wasn't fermenting anymore. It never got like a super aggressive ferment. I mean, I did get at one point a little bit up into yeah. the airlock, switch that out. Um, but then it calmed down pretty much. Uh, the cherries were floating on top and they never really sunk down. But I just felt like mm. it was time. I tasted it. I was blown away. I said, okay, it's just time to put it in a keg. So they've both been in the keg for a long time, cold cold crashing sort of and carbonating up so um, the only other the other last thing I'll say is I took the dregs from the original golden and those went got split into two more batches back there which are ready to m go into a longer term glass storage okay um, I've got those dregs are so that those been in, in there for about four months but they look pretty good so I, I just want to get them into a secondary to slow down oxidation um, but then I'll have dregs and I'm going to do something else. So what I what I have there is I took the dregs, two new batches, a golden and a red, like a Flanders red type of recipe. So that's going six months from now, maybe we'll taste those. Okay. Um, uh, I'm tracking all these lineages and I'm going to keep developing the micro <laughs> base. And we'll see what, yeah, it's going to be this <laughs> amazing Ancestry. family com. tree. Yeah, it's going to so, be great. Anyway, Enough of that. I want to taste these. Yes, please taste you these. You start talking. So this is your golden sour. This is this golden sour base. Yeah, and I think we tasted this on camera mm -hmm. months ago, right? And it had a, a very samples, yeah. and had very a very strong okay. sourness to it. It's um, it's not the some of the the, the acidity is gone. It's it's replaced with a lasting aftertaste. There's celery and almost uh, a leather yeah taste going on there. It's almost like a, it, it's almost like a, a nut butter or like a bready, uh, like a butter quality to it. It's not like straight up diacetyl, but... Yeah, okay. Unlike the yeah, like it's kind of coats your... But there's a distinct flavor that's palate. a little bit confusing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's and it lingers. Yeah, yeah again, I'm pulling it out and it's, 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 it's grainy, but there's, there's like, yeah. a, like, every, like celery seed is sort of what mm. it reminds me of. Like if you know, going through your your mom's uh, it's like spice rack, celery seed and wheat thins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but with without like the sweetness of wheat thins. It's not entirely um, off-putting, but it's not something that I'd want to see again. That's true. That, right? that 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 would be my my. Like favorite. I'm gonna drink this because I am enjoying it. Yeah. And now that it's getting hotter here, mm -hmm. I mean it it, it works. Yep. Um, and especially in small samples like this, and and because I split it, it's only like two and a half gallons. There's so. a little bit of like a like a, just to bring you through the whole taste. Those of you watching, there is a, there's an acidity at the beginning, and then it sort of dissipates, and then you're left with this. What I'm what we're saying is like a celery seed, you know, uh, bready, uh, grainy, but then like there is like an element of like horsey, you know, yeah, leather thing going Yeah, there's a funk to it. There's yeah. a funk in there. Okay. Now, this <laughs> is much cleaner. It's almost like the, you did have that re-fermentation. And what's left, uh, like anything that was like off-putting here is gone. It's, it's gone, been, like, right? Thank you. Thank it's you. just it's it amazingly swept away, different, right? actually, yes. It is, it is one of the better sort of creeks that I've ever had because I think we had a few on cameras or commercial examples yeah, yeah. and they taste like cough syrup. This does not. This is actually what I would imagine it should be. You have some cherry sourness. Yeah. It's 
you certainly f- have it the aroma on the nose, when we first yeah, it's like the beautiful. fruits there. Yeah. And then but it's it's backed with the sour beer and like I think that, you know, when you said to me before the camera started rolling, like, see if you can pull this out of this. Yeah. And ugh, like it's I'm hard. trying to. I almost wonder if the celery seed is a little bit supported by the cherry. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but but huh. but there's definitely but there's no linger. So no, it makes it me think that it makes me think that it went away. Yeah. And yeah. I, I almost wonder if the sugar from the cherries did create a re-ferment yeah. in the micro, scrubbing. whatever that micro yeah. base was, it took huh. whatever was in here, whether it be diacetyl, a little acetone yeah, or something, that's and it too. metabolized it out. Because yeah. that's what that's what does happen right. with Brett, Pedio, whatever. Remember, this is this is most this is a Rosalaire blend. Yep. Mostly. And Giga Yeast sweet Flemish uh, blend. Mm. So it was definitely a re-ferment. I almost wonder if, if 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 there was still some of this not chilled and crashed out. It would be interesting just to take this and um, add some sugar to it or something, mm. get it to re-ferment mm. or pitch more microbes just to learn better. Yeah. If if that's if it could be corrected or yeah. or I guess the point is on certain podcasts I've listened to and certain articles I've read, you, know, you end up with this beer and you go, oh, well, you know, it's acidic. I like that and it's light and it's but there's that weird taste in it. So maybe you put it on some fruit yeah. to either try to cover it up, but maybe get that referment, and then you're left with this. So one of our YouTube viewers, Dan ABA, actually talked about right, right. putting it on fruit, like especially if you brew these sours and they're not sour enough for your taste. Like throw it on some fruit yeah. and then they become yeah. exceptional. Yeah. Please bottle some of this. Well, it's all going to get bottled because I want to get it out of the kegs and put okay. them in the keg right Okay. Here. But yeah. I'd like to see you put it somewhere yeah. where someone else, not us, yeah. can taste it and who hopefully yeah. has some experience in judging yeah. these kind of beers because this seems to me to be, you know, what I would hope a, a creek would be, you know. As a home brewer, yeah. just trying to make some sour beer, mm. Um, mm. This really exceeds expectations. I think so, and it, it has the it has the body that I expect. There's none of the um, like you pointed out the uh, this, whatever that coat that buttery coating yeah. Yeah. that's gone too. Yeah, it's great. This I, is great. I think the funny thing about it is that for for me at least, making sour beer at home to me like the ultimate goal is to make fruited sours because mm. when if we go out to a, a bar that's got a wide variety of sour beers I and mean, getting a goose or something like that is is great but what I'm really looking for is different fruited sours because okay. I just I'm just really drawn to that I think yeah. acidity in the fruit makes for a very unique fruit beer experience versus like a wheat beer with fruit in it you know Absolutely. so I mean if I could reproduce this every single time so that I knew I could then do this to <laughs> then, it then we'd be go. in great shape okay. so. Again, we'll see what the next two beers yeah. taste like. If I get this flavor in the next two beers, then they're gonna. Then I won't. I won't <sighs> hold half of it. Maybe I'll pull a gallon for comparator's sake mm. again, but I'll fruit most of it mm. and just drive towards fruit. Or maybe I'd split it and do cherries and then do raspberries, yeah. or do yeah. like raspberries and or blueberries something. or something. Just yeah. see what else you can kind of come up with. Yeah. So right. Well, all right. So just previewing for the viewers. Like I have 15 gallons of sour <laughs> know, beer in my a, basement. So so just uh, just as an FYI, we will put up a video probably in the next few weeks of <clears throat> us actually putting together a mixture of old and newish sour beers and our whole process of doing that. So that if you <laughs> if you have like four or five years, you know, just stashed away for your you know brewing uh experience you just want to brew beers and just have them sit around for a while so that you can at some point <laughs> blend them yeah uh we'll have a video on our um our process in doing that because i think if we can figure out how to best measure things and then decide okay yeah. this is the optimal um, mixture of these three beers, one being three-year-old, two-year-old, one-year-old beers, then someone else could try that same process at home when they have <laughs> beers that old yeah. 
you know, and, and brew on the same day every year. You know what the funny, the funny thing about that process is yeah. that it seems like, man, a long time to wait and the complexity to it. And, I mean, I've had to store a couple buckets back here for a long time, and but the reality is I I just sort of forget about them, and it sort of fits my brewing lifestyle right now, yeah. which is I get a chance to brew, brew and then I can let it, it go <laughs> for six to nine months and come back to it when I've got a chance. Right. Um, it sort of works. So yeah. the funny, I guess my point is, Time is always moving forward. So you make a sour beer, you put it away, and before you know it, it's going to be a year later anyway. True that. And time you can make another marches. one, and you know, you know, it's, if you just and you're, if you're brewing all these beers for like community brews, hey, you know, there you, go. you can have a sour beer in the background just waiting. So awesome, cool. All right, well, that's all I have to say. You know, the other thing, then, there's one more thing. Okay. You know, like popcorn. Yeah, I did. <laughs> like, like not put, like let's say yes. popcorn without any butter, without any salt, just. And then you get the like the kernel. Like, think of like the kernel of that. That's what I'm getting now. So sorry, maybe DMS. I don't know. Maybe, but no, it's not a corn. Like, it's it could cooked be. Corn. It's hard. It's to more. Say. It's not a cooked corn thing. Yeah. It's more of like, you know, <laughs> when you have those popcorn kernels. Yeah. And then it's just, you're just getting a lot of the, the skin of, you know, the, yeah. the, before as it pops. That's all you're getting. That's what I'm getting now. Uh, it's not it's it, it's not celery seed. It's popcorn. It is popcorn. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yep. So all that it must have got scrubbed out with the, with the cherries. Yep. That's awesome. Or, all right. Or transform. Please bottle this. Let's talk about it when you get some score sheets back. I want to talk more about this. Cause yes. It's great. Yes. As you can see, okay. I got nothing left. So there'll be a video sometime in the future. Yes. Because time does march. Cherry forward. sour score sheets. And in 2018, we'll okay. have a video <laughs> regarding judges score sheets on that creek you made. And if it's not anything but exceptional, I'm going to be sad. Then we're just going to move on. We'll just keep. We'll drinking. just keep drinking. It's fine. <laughs> Great. And then you can. And then you can start complaining about the 2015 BJC. Yeah, man. Because that'll be another video. Then I'll have my ammunition. <laughs> All right. Cool. For John and Mike, Sour on. Cheers. Cheers.